tabula. The tabula. Yeah, it's it's just, <clears throat> well, it's it's a highly commoditized Kentucky bourbon, but that doesn't mean it's not good. Have you ever had Eagle Rare? That's what I've been drinking lately. No, I like my Eagle well done, especially if it's a bald eagle. They're pretty tough, so you, you can't overcook them. Do you ever deep fry them? Oh, yeah. Everything's good deep fried. It is. I've had a, it's true. I was just at the fair. Everything was deep fried. Yeah, that's yeah, kind amazing. of the fair is like, how much can we deep fry things and put them on sticks? And that's, <laughs> that's literally why the fairs exist. <laughs> I've had deep fried pizza on a stick at a fair, and it's just like, this is no easier or better than pizza, but, you know, it's fair food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Bloody Mary thing. Where they've just run away with the ideas. Oh yeah. You ever yeah. seen the Bloody Marys? Yeah, the that, ones like, with like little, pizza and chicken yeah, wings have, and they'll have sliders on the on the <laughs> coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what episode number are we doing? Episode. Okay, we're doing episode. Okay. Poised to be the darkest episode okay. yet. Start no, it's recording. Not, start recording. <laughs> it's up to you, Jake. Start it's, recording whenever you're available. It's, it's the first. Uh, it's the first Sunday episode. Oh, it is Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the first episode. That My we're week's bre- been all We're breaking the Sabbath for this episode. <laughs> it's okay, though. You're drinking, uh, you're drinking bl- wine. Christ's blood already. Yeah, sh- you know right. what I should have got? No, this wasn't blessed. The, yeah. the priest didn't dip his dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that... <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> yeah, have you seen them? Do I've it? never been to that are church. You, are you right. a priest? <laughs> then it closed. It's, I, I used to go to this Pentecostal church where the priest would it was dip his dick in the... It was a Pinal Pino Costal. Uh, no. No? Pinal uh, Acostal. Pino, 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 hey, what do you guys think about the new mascot? I don't. Is that a mascot? I don't know. I just decided it was. He, well, if there's sunlight in here, he'd dance faster. His, that, I oh, have he's a, a solar-powered dancer? Yeah. Oh, I thought this was uh, a display or something. It's like a calculator. I had a he's very, really bad because he's not dancing. Every time I see that thing, I'm like, how many, how many years is it going to be before that's in the white elephant exchange? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's like an inverted pear-shaped sumo wrestler, which is probably not good competitively, right? You want your weight down low? Well, he's romanticized. He looks more like a Western superhero. Yeah, this guy only works <laughs> but like he's still immediately he's identifiable a as a sumo <laughs> wrestler. <laughs> because it's a racist representation. Presentation of an Asian. What? And he's got broad shoulders and a small waist, relative to how a sumo wrestler. So he's like the Barbie be. doll of a of a sumo. That is yeah, the, it's an un, unrealistic and unhealthy body image for the a sumo new wrestler. animation style. Is like you draw a triangle and put well, appendages on it, and that's a male. He just looks like he's <laughs> sucking in his gut. And then for a female, you flip the triangle. That's right. <laughs> I don't see any of that. I see a well proportioned sumo man. He's beautiful. And Have his you own seen skin. a real sumo wrestler? They do not look like this. Yeah. They don't dance either. Real sumo wrestlers have curves. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> they can dance if they want to. Yeah, that little thing they do before the match is kind of a dance. True. They slap, where they, where slap they their slap knees. Their you put, and yeah, and then you put your right clap. leg in. <laughs> you put your right leg out. And there's always you powder. You do sumo pokey what is the and powder shake for? it. It's probably so you don't get all stuck to each other. Mm, it's just like talcum powder. Well, they, all, they all get I think it's cocaine. Cancer. That's how they Wait, keep going. you want to be slippery, though, right? So they couldn't That's get why a grip they do on you? Yeah. No, well, so you don't want your hands to be slippery. slippery. Oh. Put it on their hands. Not their bodies? Depends on the type of powder. Some powders are sticky. Some powders are well, not sticky, but at friction. Some add sticky after. Slip. I guess some powders would be sticky. Oh, like if, you put, if you're putting graphite sure. on your body? Hey, fun, fun thing about graphite. Do you guys know the, the whole like anecdote about, like, oh, the Americans didn't like... Uh, the way the pens didn't work on the space station. Oh, so yes. They spent millions of dollars. I fucking resent that. that it's whole, obnoxious. Yeah, it's yeah so they're stupid. like, oh, they spent millions and millions of dollars on developing a pen. Yeah, and the practical the Russians, Yeah, because yeah, they're so wise. They use pencils. And the, the thing is like, oh, look how much the American government wastes, right? Mm-hmm. But Jeff, you know the real reason. Well, what I heard was that graphite dust will get into the instruments and just fuck everything up and you, you have to control your particulates in it, space because there's can, no gravity. It can cause fucking fires yeah. on your spacecraft <laughs> if you have graphite floating around. Right. So the Russians then adopted the pens after we developed yeah, them. Yeah, they're still they're using the pens. I way think. better. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. That's a pretty good investment, I'd say. Stupid fucking Russians. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, they, my watch They do is the Russian. best with what they have. They do, yeah, they do pretty good. They don't good. have much. They do pretty good with it. They, they, they have a lot of useless land. They have a lot of land. <laughs> so they have much. the most land of any country. And yeah. none of it's good. Useless, <laughs> for sure. They have the coldest place on Earth, right? Yakutsk. Oh, yeah, Yakutsk. I used to keep that on my phone all the yeah. time. It's like a train depot in no, the middle of Siberia. No, you're thinking of uh, Barbara Boxer's vagina. <laughs> it's the coldest place on Earth. <laughs> it's the loneliest place on Earth. <laughs> it's an unused place. It's the ennui Disneyland. Uh, so are we recording? It's yet, the or? what? On Wii Disneyland. Yeah, I want some fans. What does that mean? I'm just ready for that that already. I don't don't know if we're recording. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, uh, Oh, wait. I just learned a new word, which doesn't happen often. Can I look that up? On Wiiland? No. E N N U I. (laughs) Pull up that word for me. What's your word? Honorary? On Wii. On Wii. I've heard that. N U I. It does it. It's spelled differently than it sounds. So help me out. How do you spell it? I think it's E N N U I. I could be. U N E E N 
E N N N U. Oh, I see it. Anyway. Yeah. How do you a pronounce it? A feeling of listlessness and dissatisfaction arising from a lack of occupation, occupational excitement. So, Barbara Boxer's <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Let me see. It says here. Wow. Bar, yeah, it says Barbara Boxer's pussy. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the, the prime the, example. The Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Use it in a sentence. No, that's an Oxford. No, that's, that's Oxford. Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> uh, Oxford. Yeah. Lack of occupation. That's the main use of it, actually. Is so the Palestinians had that. Are we recording? Then, yeah, and then, so no. uh, the Israelis fixed it. Now they have lack of country. Oh, we are recording. Welcome <laughs> yeah. to Babylon oh, episode 16. Ooh. 16 sweet episodes. 16. Yeah. Battle Lab Sweet 16. The Battle Lab Quinceanera. We're I'm, so I'm going to go in the bathroom afterward and just get sloshed on like a smuggled in bottle of flavored vodka and then <laughs> blow my cousin. And that's classic you know, Babble Lab 16. <laughs> sweet 16. <laughs> we missed uh, talking about our Quinceanera, but we'll skip straight to the Sweet 16. <laughs> no, I said this is our Quinceanera. We're just a little late. Oh, you said that already? Yeah. I missed that. What Later age later? is the Quinceanera? 15. 15. 15. Oh, okay. It's our like Quinceanera plus one. It's like our top. It's our one year anniversary <laughs> of our quinceanera. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Which is a big, a big thing for us. Also known as our birthday. You don't need to smuggle in liquor. We have plenty of bottles here. No, he's saying if, if he was, was 16, sweet 16, he was like oh. describing a sweet 16. I also don't need to blow my cousin, but you know, <laughs> you don't I need to. If it was a you. sweet 16, <laughs> I, assume, I assume alcohol just does that you to you. Get to <laughs> get, get in cousin blowing mode. That, I actually assume that uh, flavored vodka did that to you. This isn't the South, and I, uh, I don't harbor incestuous feelings. As a result of yeah, that. Yeah, you're very open with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't harbor them. They're in a fucking hangar being shown off during the military parade. <laughs> Did you guys ever get iced when you were in high school? No. Uh, yeah. No, Not I high never, school, but like... I never participated in so that. Probably though. a little pre-early okay. college. Someone tried it and you're just like... No, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not drinking. The only, this. The only <laughs> time I ever got iced was at your bachelor party when. Oh, the penalty cooler. Yeah, yeah. the penalty uh, cooler. I was penalized. A but lot. that was like an, a gentleman's agreement, like at the beginning of the weekend. Yeah, it was a very gentlemanly. Like this is cooler. happening. Be a man. You can leave if you have a problem. <laughs> yeah. if, an, if anything you're doing, if that act is arbitrarily deemed shitty, not good, <laughs> <laughs> you have to draw blindly from the penalty cooler yeah. and drink from which you. I'm right. For, for which for which Jake <laughs> drink from the teat of the evil cooler. <laughs> for which Jake was a vicious cycle of of like, hey Jake, you're you're sleeping in. Drink this. No, and I then you, no, I told him I I went in there and I yeah. gave him like a twenty minute warning. Was like, you sure. overestimate how alert I yeah, am like, when yeah. I'm drunkenly Jake, in a look slumber. At me. Right, but he kept getting like he would get drunk and then pass out and then because he was passed out, they would give him more alcohol and it then was, he would drink yeah. and get passed out again. A vicious cycle. <laughs> It was great for me. I got to spend most of the most of the trip in bed. Yeah, you don't remember yeah. any of it, do you? Yeah. No, I remember pieces. They're flat <laughs> pieces. I remember there was I remember, a whole um, three day weekend. I remember fishing with Jason and wait, hold up, back up. Was it only three days? Uh, I think we got there on Thursday and left Sunday. Holy fuck, we did a lot. We yeah, a lot. that was a that was a pretty packed three days. That was a, that was a good trip. Though. Yep. That was yeah, a really good that was trip. A really fun trip. No, yeah. I I do, I do vividly remember fishing with Jason. I remember him saying, "We're going to the dock and fishing," and I was like, "Okay, let me put my boat shoes on." And so I did that, <laughs> and then we went over to the dock, and uh, oh God, I just got burned. Like my we nose. realized. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, you essentially maced yourself based <coughs> on your facial expression. Keep going. Go ahead. You look, you look like a rape perpetrator. <coughs> um, <laughs> because they got maced. They made, yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we realized neither of us know how to like put together a fishing pole and fish. What? We're, we're terrible men. Uh, you just extend the rod and well, tie like, the lure. No, it's more the like they couldn't string it. And, yeah. Yeah, you put that. it through the hole sequentially. It was no, more, but the more to do with the reel. The bottom part is The weird. reel is a little That tricky. wasn't set up for you? No, no, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. So we had to do the reel. And I remember I got it, and I was like, I think this is right. I think I did it. And then I went to cast it, and it just immediately tangled itself into this fucking nightmarish like, uh, knot of shit. And so shit. you just drink beer instead, which yeah. is essentially half of fishing. Usually so. yeah, there's then, a release or something. Either you, yeah. you flick that yeah, rail open yeah. or you hold we the figured it out. And then it, yeah, yeah. No, I had it looped around an extra thing, and it uh, caused like absolute catastrophe. Yeah, yeah there's nothing to, like, harder to untangle. We you had just to cut have it to out cut with that a knife and start yeah. over. Yeah, and then exactly. DB, and I. this is probably the only time I say this, uh, put us to shame at a thing, and that was fishing. Yeah. Oh, well, he's from Florida. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what they it's do It's like Florida. the thing he knows how to do. Well, yeah. anything aquatic, he's pretty good at. If there was alligators there, he'd probably be the best at avoiding them. I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> I no. would leave. <laughs> yeah, I would leave. <laughs> Just I don't, I don't want to fuck with that. <laughs> All right, they have uh, a tour in Florida. You can pay to harpoon an alligator. We, didn't we talk a, about this? Yes, we did. Yeah, oh, boomsticks. No, right. we talked about boomsticking, yeah. not harpooning. Well, you can, you can pay to get taken on a... a 
fan vote. And but that's like doing them a favor. That's like someone pay, you're you're right? paying they someone. They should pay me. Yeah. Pest removal. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like when you pay to feed the ostrich at an ostrich ranch. I guess that's you're feeding the animal for. You know them. who's the most? I've always thought this. Do you guys ever play Warhammer? No, but I know the figurines. I'm like aware of what it it's is. It's a it's a tabletop game. Yeah. And oh yeah, you make you little this. figurines. You spend a lot of money first. They're fucking expensive, and they're not even assembled. And all it's 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 in the plastic mold still. They don't even cut it out it. for you. Right. So you have to put it together. All the little pieces. You cut it out. You shave off the little, the like nubs from the injection mold. Yeah. And then you piece it together with and hazardous chemicals. <laughs> and then you paint it. You're they doing the, all the fucking work. They say the entire battle is decided when you see the opposing army. And it's you like, see whether they have nubs still or whether they can draw up with the sandpaper. <laughs> who, who cared more? Yeah. Yeah, but it, how brilliant yeah, it's to, very to be smart. whoever makes them. I they guess put it in like, the injection mold, they're like, oh, it's going to be really expensive to process these. It's like, and fuck then, it, make them do it. <laughs> no, put it in the box <laughs> and ship it out. That's, <laughs> that's the appeal. I'm guessing the person that just like popped them out of the thing and then went to go play probably had more time to strategize, so they're going to win instead of the person that spent hours and hours painting. Time. Maybe they were dedicated, though. Maybe they... they <laughs> You know, they sat there, they meditated over their figures. Yeah, it's like old armies they used to like paint themselves before battle and shit. It's like yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but did that actually help them? Win? Then you could at least yeah. sell them. It was intimidating as shit, I think. Right? Yeah, but does that work when your life's not on the line? Yes. In just a game of strategy? I, just a game of strategy? Excuse me, my life was on the line every time I played Warhammer. <laughs> I've never played Warhammer. <laughs> Very high stake circles. I, I was playing it in like a basement in Cambodia and the loser got shot. <laughs> Do they have basements in Cambodia? Uh, the place I was at did. Aren't they always like that little like thatch shanties? structure? I, I assume like, a hut. It's the lifted basement, off the ground. Well, the basement right? is the crawl space. Oh, you're just underneath. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Laying down. You're sitting cross-legged and you're hunched over. Yeah. That's a good point. If you're not under the ground, is it a basement? I think basement it's just the be, bottom you know, floor. I think, I think it's, it's just a subterranean. Floor. I, think it's, I think it's exactly what I said. I think it's a crawl space at that point. Yeah. Not a basement. Yeah. yeah. So what's our segment today? Uh, yeah, yes. We're doing? we're doing a I've heard of this. Is that what we call this segment? Or are we doing the I've heard of this? <laughs> it's been first? so long since we've done our I've normal heard format. Of this. Yeah. Heard of it. We're out it's of it. been because yeah, we've, we've had it's three a, episodes we, of guests. We know who does yeah, the third of July sextacular, I think is yeah. what we were calling it. Yeah. The Babble Lab Sextacular. Okay, that's what Yeah. So we had three if you're listening to this now, you just came off the back to back three guest episodes. Yeah, it would have yeah. been when we had two guests in the last episode, we had Scott and Ryan. No, just Scott. No, no, just Scott. No, Ryan showed up. Oh, Ryan, yeah. Ryan was uh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. Ryan? Yes, yeah. Ryan. Ryan made an Jake, appearance. do you remember Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You weren't there when Ryan was there. No, Ryan Ryan was the one who was saying all that heinous shit. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> really racist. I was just like, Ryan, just calm down. <laughs> calm down, good. dude. Yeah, Jews are fine. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck's your problem, Great man? People. They are. They make good doctors. My oldest friend is a Jew. I love him very much. Mm. All right, so what's our uh, I've heard of yeah, this Yeah, we're today. doing an I heard of this, and I think none of us did that much research per usual. So. I think a lot of us have ideas about this and yeah. a lot of it is really just an idea so you're questions. gonna hear a lot of conjecture in this segment cole and i are gonna end large up in an argument for this one <laughs> Jake as, and I as is tradition <laughs> <laughs> you are get, talking uh, out of your ass <laughs> and i'm gonna get really he's gonna get upset that i didn't research it and i'm gonna get upset about like the definition of a word <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> not the ai thing again not the gargoyle thing again the gargoyle thing what was the gargoyle thing oh gargoyles versus grotesque <laughs> Yeah. Aren't they the same thing? No, no. Gargoyles have to have a water spout built into them. Is that true? A gargoyle. Can we verify that? Otherwise, gargoyles grotesque. have to come to life. It sounds right to yes, me. I mean, at night. <laughs> we never looked it up? They're led by Goliath. I mean, there's I thought so, it's a simile. There's so many sources you could... Are there? Do you want me to look up gargoyle versus grotesque before yes, we get please. Right. This yes, is good content. Gargoyle, it has to have a water spout. Is this good content? Technically. Goliath was my favorite gargoyle because it was voiced by Peter Cullen. And he's purple. All right. Well, this color had nothing to do with it. I know, I know you're all about I was, what their hide looks like. I was him for Halloween one year oh, okay. when I was a kid. Right, here we go. Would we trust Wikipedia? Yes. Yeah, yeah always. All right. And, yeah, and, Dimmy Wales will never let me down. And architecture? Dimmy? A, <laughs> it's a fortune. Oh, okay. It's hilarious. Though. A gargoyle is a carved or formed grotesque with a spout designed to convey water from a roof and away from the side of a building. Therefore, preventing rainwater from running down masonry walls okay. and eroding the mortar between so them. So it's a, it also the grotesque comes alive. is the creature, and then a gargoyle is is a subset where it has a specific function. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, they all had a function. They scared away demons. The gargoyle <laughs> right. gargles. This one was a multitasker. <laughs> Although, really, you'd think they'd make the demons feel really at home because they looked like fucking demons. Oh, yeah. They were all horned and fucking. So are they supposed to be scarier than demons? So I terrifying guess. that demons maybe they're are like, hey, them? this has already has demons. Like our, de- our demon quota oh, yeah. is full. These are demons on our side. Go to your own demon area. 
right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're good on demons. <laughs> yeah, the gargoyle thing is one of my go-tos. Yeah, the other demons. one being uh, octopuses. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. actually... It's not octopi. Or octop... I think it's octop... Pods? No? Octopus is Greek considered root, actually. correct, but octopus is considered the English like yeah. standard. Because it's not a Latin really? root, it's a yeah. Greek root. Octopi, the exact term for it is it's wrong because it's hyper correct. Octopus. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's yeah. so right, it's, it's wrong. It's so right, it's wrong. That's, hyper that's, hyper correct comes from uh, misapplying a well known rule in a case where it doesn't apply. Yeah, because uh, it's not okay. a Latin root. That's a fair way to put that. It's a Greek root, I'm pretty sure. All right, so it says, the standard English plural of octopus is octopuses. However, the word octopus comes from Greek, and yeah. the Greek plural form is octopodes. Yeah, Modern pods, usage yep. of octopodes is so infrequent... <laughs> so happy I know this. <laughs> many people mistakenly create the erroneous, erroneous plural from octopi form from the, formed according to rules for Latin plurals. Nailed it! Yep. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. This is a, already the most educational episode <laughs> of Babylab. <laughs> drop an well, entomology just, well, like good, crazy. Because the next like hour is going to be total bullshit, basically. It's going yeah. uh, to be us de-educating people. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, can you look up one more thing for me? Yeah. Because I still don't know this. Entomology versus etymology. I think ent is the study of insects and yes. et is the study of words. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, that we'll needs to be out. verified right now, though. Etymology. It's critical mm -hmm. to the <laughs> we can't move argument forward. for the... We All know. of our listeners are waiting to hear. Etymology is a study of words. Et? Et. Okay. Et etymology, Then yeah. entomology is the insect one. Entomology is... Trees. Bugs. One second. It's not trees. Herpetology is... I don't know. Study of insects. That's ar arborology. The study of insects. I know. I was, going, I was basing it off the Lord of the Rings ents. Ah, ah. entomology. Oh, sorry. I assume that's where I got it from. I didn't get that. All right. My brain moves Bugs. very <laughs> slow. Are we going to move on Somehow to the... Somehow feels like it's going... Are we jumping into this? <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. So the the thing that we've all researched and spent a lot of time talk, uh, thinking about is basic income. Uh, well, no. Yeah, universal, universal basic it's, income. It's universal basic income justified by automation. Well, well I think uh, we can uh, talk about it on a wider scale. Why, okay. why are you picking yeah. only us? Because that's... What if it's a good idea? That's literally what, what we talked about researching. What if it's that's a good idea? I the last part. We, I, I said it every all time. Around. Well, yeah, none of us wrong. did research, so it doesn't so matter that the automation. Why does it have to be because of the automation? What if it's just would have been a good idea to that's, do now? It's... I don't think it would be. I think it only works. Well, okay. So I think... Let's go through steps. The basic principle here, though, is that it generally should only work with automation in place. Because yeah, this is the reason why it's a valid idea to, to right. someone with like a libertarian mind. Right. Because so the idea of basic income is just everybody has a certain amount of income that is uh, allocated a, to them. It's a living wage you don't right. work for. It, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily have to be living. So a lot of it, the, the a lot of the rudimentary portion of it is like you start off with like seven thousand dollars a year. So the people there's play, I think Denmark has tried to implement this. Yeah, Finland's a little bit. about to. Yeah, and it's a very small amount. It's actually not really livable. It's just supposed to supplement. So. Um, the idea is that it will become more of an actual income at some point, like a living uh, wage, when automation is becoming and taking people's jobs. So we will no longer have to do the really, really basic basal uh, tasks that yeah. a lot of work requires as a, of us. So from that, you will not have jobs like ticket taking at a movie theater, serving somebody at McDonald's, whatever the case. Well, and, yeah, driving is the largest one. I think that's right. the largest employment sector in the country is people who drive for yeah. a living. That's like delivery, truck driving, like all the way down to like pizza and FedEx. Right. Like more people drive for money. Totally. But why, why in all of history is now the time we implement this? Automation has been ruling out segments of jobs yeah. Yeah, I think as the long as history has been. Why? Yeah. why? So I don't Everyone th thinks the scale is different in their generation. Everyone thinks that the engine came. They do. It was, yeah, so why now is it? I have, well, so I have thoughts on that, well, actually. But Jeff, Jeff, go, go ahead. Let me just jump because the, the actual thought behind that was this, this th thought has occurred in many times. And pretty much every time that has occurred, we found another level of we can do better. And instead of spending time on the things that were very menial we can now spend our time doing something that's more important. Yes. And so we get better and better technology and the world starts to run smoother as a result. So I think... That's you're, always been the case. You're, yeah, it always has <clears throat> been the case so far, but I think at some point it will start shifting to the point where we can afford a basic income and it will make sense where a lot of the tasks that we do need like will be handled entirely by robots at that point. So like, if you think about... Like, the they already, like they already are. Uh, a lot of them are. Not all of them, though. So, like, really basic stuff that you're going to have to... Like, 
so I'm like a, a I'm a financial analyst, so I have to look at a lot of data and synthesize that into something that's useful. Yeah. So that type of thing, some of the base level of it, there's some there's some portions of my job that are could be automated, and I really wouldn't have to be involved much. But a lot of it, I'm still going to have to look at. So a lot, I think there's a human element that will never go away. But if you think about like the so, so that to to your point is what I'm going for. But now if you think about it on a broader scale of of what's like the end goal, what, like what's the dream that we would have? And it's yeah, I want to talk about that. Yeah, you think about like uh, we want to we figure out how we can fix the energy problem. So everything pretty much runs self-sustaining. We have robots that then harvest all of that energy in a way, or just solar panels, or whatever it takes to run the grid, and people basically get to live and do work that they find meaningful, or not even necessarily work, just the things that they want to do. Yeah, I think the key term here is uh, post commodity or post scarcity okay. world, mm-hmm. where you you don't need to work to get stuff anymore. You just have the base. It's it's the Star Trek ideal. Once right, okay. you have everything at your fingertips, right. The, the greed thing kind of goes away a little bit because it's like, you're not special. You're just an asshole for having all that. Like, it's easy to replicate a right. bunch of shit. Right. So people instead just go to fulfill themselves right. a little bit. You get, but, you get fulfillment and you also get to yeah. do things. AI, are, AI is a really important factor here too. Do you guys know P versus MP problems? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, d- it describes the difficulty of a, an AI to perform a task. Like there are NP hard problems that are relatively easy for a human mind to solve, right. but are exceedingly difficult like the amount of computation that's required to do it yeah like the, the chess current. versus go is like a really good example like the reason we were able to beat humans in chess a long time ago with computers is because it the, the it's kind of a known quantity game where it's a it's an exponential amount to or it's not an exponential amount of possibilities like if i move here there's only so many things that they can do in response and that leads to another set of results okay and it's easy for a computer to kind of go through that really quickly right right whereas with go because it's kind of fractal and it's kind of pattern based and there's a lot of bluffing and nuance and bravado that goes on in that game, it's an NP problem where you can't just crunch the numbers and okay. win. Like there isn't ha- enough you have computing to learn. power. Although yeah. they just did. Well, well, that's why we're getting to a really cool place with AI because, the, and this was in our AI discussion, you have to learn. You have to have computer learning to do that. Yeah. You well, can't just teach it how to do it. That's a core yeah. assumption with like that. That is teaching that, how to do it. It's teaching well, it itself. is. It is. But the di- yeah, the yeah. distinction the extent. distinction comes from the Jesus. I'm already slurring. Uh, <laughs> the distinction comes from you know, am I having it exhaust every possible right. uh, thing that it sure. can do? Yeah, you were kind of insin- insinuating that like we told it what to do, where it like we presented it with a situation and it referenced a list over here of maneuvers to do in that situation, which isn't what happened. It it looked and understood and thought. Well, for I think itself. that's how it starts, right? That's how it starts. It says play this game a thousand or a million times and learn from every outcome of that and mm-hmm. then learn further from that. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, we that didn't plug those in. Right. Right. It no, we also, that itself. They also have, have you algorithms get, where they don't teach it. Like what, what the things it can do are like, they'll teach it to play a video game and they won't teach it the rules of the game. They'll mm-hmm. just teach it what like a game over screen looks like. Mm-hmm. Right. And it'll start figuring those out just by yeah. you yeah. Know, doing stuff. And then it either, you know, survives or doesn't. It's almost like evolution, right? Yeah. We either works or it doesn't. Yeah. And they, it they, goes they, down that branch. They've done that with, um, they give it a little robot, a little digital creation and it, it says walk. Yeah. They'll teach it how to, right. and it goes through, it, they're funny right. to watch. It goes yeah. through all these goofy ways of, of, Locomotion until yeah, it right. arrives it's funny, at like how we actually walk. Sometimes the ones it settles on are completely different, though. I saw one where it figured out that pumping its left arm really hard <laughs> would overcome like <laughs> leaning back too far, and it could cancel itself out and like, still move forward <laughs> while running, like you know, just moving its legs. Is that not how you guys run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the distinction here is that you give the the it the tools so that it self can learn. Yeah, it's like it's, it's a self. Yes, you you are teaching it in some way. Like it's like the teach a man to fish. Right, on a really basic level. But right? I think they were even doing that basic in tool. a basic form back when they were doing being okay. chess. Okay. Uh, no, that's a very set set of rules. They didn't have like a best like, move case in every move. That's not how like they yeah, won. I don't. Well, I know. think it, I think it was collectively exhaustive the way the AI like the best chess AI, chess, uh, chess AI. Jesus. Fuck. I guess I guess the point uh, is like they give it like a set of like this is all the things that can happen in chess, right? But and maybe in what you're saying for Go, Jeff, is that you gave it a set of. Uh, basics and then it played that way and then it said okay well this happened and we weren't ready for that so now i see that it, they did this move and i can learn from that okay I, here, I think i have a good nuance is that its decisions aren't based on precedent it hasn't seen its next move before right it's has a, an understanding that's deep enough and an imagination good enough that it can postulate out a result 
if that makes oh, sense. Okay, it's so not, it isn't it, what I was saying. Yeah. I don't think it's an imagination. I think it's literally just trial and error. That's what I was thinking it it's was. It's literally just trial and error. Every, yeah. every movie is trial and error. I don't think that's but I think like that, possible yet for it to go through every permutation of Go. No, it's it just, just tries the next one. Right. I, that's what I'm saying is if it plays enough games and then it learns from each game. But it can't. Well, like, if it tries that next move and then... What you're saying is it imagines the rest of the game based on that move? No, it just once it does that, if that next move is successful, then it does another move. And if that one's not successful, it won't do that next move. It'll try a different move next game. That's what I mean. I don't think it... But, it's not but based on precedent. The thing like to that. remember is that the people it's beating are not replicating the moves it's seen before. Yeah, every game is so never it's happened now, before. So it's ever. now figured out... If well, it's, knowing, not, knowing it's not doing it based on... It's, not, it's playing itself. No, but when it, when it learning, does play against people, which it's done. I know, now, but I yeah. think it's learning... Before that, before yes, they even do that, it it's is. learning against itself it, what your, could, what's a good move. Is in, your deck of cards thing helpful here? Was it you that yes. was telling me if you shuffle a deck of cards? Yeah, that, yeah it's that, a combination. That combination has seen. never been seen before because the permutations are so great. Yeah. Go is like that times a million. Yeah. So it, there's no way it can know that like, oh, I've, if I do this, there's a predictable combination uh, okay, of things that, that I can operate with. It learns generalized strategies based on what's going on. Now, the way those strategies manifest is usually like a weight for different kinds of yeah. moves in different scenarios. Yeah. It takes okay. all the inputs that it knows. I think we're, I think we're getting knows, hung up, but, but this, yeah, this is a long-winded yeah, thing. Yeah. So to, yeah. this is, I'm trying to answer your question about why this is different. Sure. And before, the Industrial Revolution was like to, to free up labor a little bit. Yep. But now I think what we're hitting is to free up every job there is. Once you can crack MP problems, even, even the creative stuff goes away. Right. Like an, a robot can do it. You wow. know, instead of just simple mechanical maneuvers right. like move that over there, this is completely different. It's like do financial analysis. Right, right. And, it actually could do and that. And create right. creative things because now you have an imagination. You can win go. You can think sure. of things we haven't thought of. So I think that that might actually... So no one has to work. Right. And that might actually come into fruition at some point, but I think it is still a ways away. And so maybe yeah, that's... So when it, we get to that point, there's no, right. no need to talk about basic income at all because we don't need to buy anything. We just have everything. But getting halfway mm. there with automation... That's something you got to talk about because there's a huge sector of the population who doesn't have those NP jobs. Well, well that, imagine that also assumes that there's a perfectly evenly distribution of wealth, right? Well, so, it's not like well, the post, concept of wealth goes scary. away. Well, yeah. it's, it does and it doesn't, right? We wealth only Think. exists in contrast to poverty, right? But if, ev if everyone has the availability of food, shelter... Sure, but the, I mean, this, that goes far beyond that. There's so many things that we want that are, aren't commodities. Yeah. So that's, that's my point, is that there's still, you're still going to have wants mm -hmm. and not necessarily needs. And so that's yeah. where like universal income becomes really cool is because you have your needs covered. Right. Then you can work for your then wants. Then you do whatever you want. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it's like if you if you're literally have enough money or not necessarily money, but like food, shelter, all that, and, but you can still strive to achieve something that's better than some other person because that's, yeah. that's what the human condition is about. We're always going to strive yeah. to achieve something new. The elephant, like, the elephant in the room there... And what a lot of people argue against this with is that unemployment subsidies now are the majority have that are usually proven pretty ineffective. Like the more breathing room you give someone on welfare, the less motivated they often are to get themselves out of that situation. Right? Yeah, but that's also uh, it's it, it, that's fine. But it's also um, a statistic that's based on a on a very set group of people. Yeah, and that's that's that are those what I want to address about that question is that the the stigma of unemployment has all this baggage right now right. where you've ostensibly failed. Yeah. Right? And like, there's the weight of that. So why would people want to be on that more? People are Because the stigma goes away. Right? It's not that you've failed no, to work I'm with the like system. No, I'm saying right now there's already stigma, but pe those people already on it are still not motivated to get away from it. Sure. Even with the stigma. But I don't think like if, if you were on, if you had all your money taken care of, do you think you would just sit around and no. consume? No. No. The four of us here would be still out doing things. Yep. Yeah. But that's yeah. so that's my point is that it's <laughs> <laughs> no, Jake. To an extent, Jake, you have all sorts of weird projects. So you, you would want to yeah, joke true. about it. No, you I would, would do things. You would I just have, don't know if they would be. Exactly. Uh, you might have some really things. cool technical innovations because you yeah. do some really Maybe. strange. But you wouldn't be. No, you would still be working because you still you're very driven by wealth. Yeah. Yeah. So you would be. Oh, the, oh! If I had right. universal basic income, that's not good enough for me. Exactly. Right. It's not universal. I still that's want. A, I still want luxury goods. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a key word that you pointed out too there. Basic, because this, that's yeah. all this is, is. We're talking about. We're not talking about everybody has everything. We're they not ever going wanted. full post scarcity world. We're going. Yes, but it's it might be a necessary stepping stone as we right. move towards that. Like once well, P jobs go away, no right. one needs to drive to do anything. Labor is completely right. gone. Like like the entire construction industry goes away. Right. Because right. robots do it. Right, but that's at best many, many hundreds of years away. Sure, I agree with well, this. I don't, I don't maybe know. not, maybe not many hundreds. I think driving goes away in fifty years. 
if not sooner. It was sort of, you know, sort of funny. I was watching um, Blade Runner last night, and and it's <laughs> that that movie is supposed to take place in 2019, and seeing their vision of what it was going to be like 40 years later, yeah. or whatever. When did that movie come out? Like 80 something. Yeah, yeah. Something like yeah that. So it comes Bruce out. Bruce Willis had hair. So yeah, what, Bruce Willis, Harrison Ford, Bruce Willis. Isn't it? Oh, I'm thinking Fifth Element. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is, no, this is the Harrison Ford one. Anyways, yeah. but it's, you, you see 2019, and, and you're like, that's two years away from now, and nothing looks like this. Yeah. And so it's funny. So I think in our heads, we get places a lot faster than we actually do. I thought 50 is a pretty conservative well, it's, guess. Well, it's funny, though, because... We already because have self-driving cars. Because, it, like... Certain things. But adoption. Well, like, you yeah. look at a movie like Blade Runner, right? Yeah. And the things, the things where all the impressive technology is happening, we don't have yet. But there are other things, like he has that, like... Horribly ugly, like computer monitor thing. Right. That he oh, yeah. Images on <laughs> yeah. that at like, one point looked really, really awesome. Yeah, now we, we, now we, we have, have flexible materials. Yeah, that can be screens now. So like, there's other. It, it's weird because innovation happens in directions that are really hard to predict. Yeah, like our tablet right? technology is ahead of Starfleet's. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, just, yeah. that's just what they could represent. <laughs> right. In the movie, I'm yeah. sure. Like, yeah, they if they. That's as thin as I could get it and still have exactly. light behind it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I guess like that's kind of getting away from the point though. But I think you. To Cole's point of, I think it is going to take longer than we think, and I think that is have to do with adoption, which is what you were. Yeah, starting the to driving on. thing is something I've thought a lot about, and I think like trucking yeah. is something you can do right away. But the like the the way that driving works the best is when everyone's in a self driving car and the cars right. can communicate yeah. with each yes. other. Yes, yeah, it's a the high car communicating situation. like if both people pull up to the stop sign at the same time. Right, we still need that human element of like the nod and the hand and all that. Right. The computers can talk to each other right. fine. There's literally no stop sign anymore because you can just weave each oh, other yeah. through perfectly. Yep. 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 I've seen traffic simulations of fully autonomous cars. Everyone, yeah. It is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the problem is, is it that looks like chaos. It's like it's imagine, not. imagine right now we still have millions and millions of people in fields every day picking berries, mm -hmm. and yeah. we could probably invent a machine to do it. But it, it, it the cost the, ratio, the yeah, the cost ratio is yeah. just not. The incentive's not there to develop a... Well, it's it's with the tech that's coming. Like, you need all kinds of optical analysis software to see the strawberry and grab it delicately enough. You can't right, just screw right. it up. Well, and then, a, there and are then, fully automated um, combines for certain Yeah, but it depends crops. on the thing. So that's yeah. the thing. It's, it's, it's just hard to automate. You can't say that everything is going to be automated. Because of that reason, right? Maybe once you maybe can do the NP stuff, and you can in thousands of years, probably everything will be automated. Sure, yeah, yeah. we're we're going getting to that point. Yeah, it's it's but it's a very complex. long run up. I yeah, think. like so, like the optical stuff. We don't see the world as objects. We see it as actions, which is really interesting to think about. Yeah, okay. Like if we we see that we project the action onto something. Yeah, okay. When we see a beanbag, we think chair because it's something we can sit on. But a computer looks at a beanbag; it does not see a chair. Right, you right, have to right. use that uh, that imaginative weapon, <laughs> which is a thing. yeah, it could be. You have to have that bag, yeah. that uh, imagination component that the AI that can solve MP problems has yeah. to be able like when when you see the road, we see the action of us moving through it, and you right. have to get to that stage. So I, I think that's what is what is missing with the agriculture considerations is right. the action of being able to. And see just, and know to move right. that out of the way, pick that, and and the is will there ever be a point where making that machine will be cheaper than just paying someone. Yeah, because right. like the other yes. dumb robots that we've had for 30 years can make that machine for us. You know what I mean? It's this progressive know, thing if, of ease. If they're, yeah, but then, then you get into like material and energy. And exactly. So those are other problems we have to solve well, first. Well, yeah. So that's, I think that's kind of what I was getting at, though, is that if you the, think about... The material's the, not a problem because the robots make that, too. They go harvest well, it. Yeah, but it's assuming that we have... a. Uh, an infinite resource that can be harvested. Sure. So that's the thing. Is this, is a, a lot of this send is robots resource into space. Based. Sure. They go, we get, can. they go get that asteroid made of aluminum. See, if but talking now you're going <laughs> now you're talking way, way further. These, these are all things that are happening right now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And SpaceX I mean, is like getting into space real easy. They're working on very it expensive now. though. Very expensive. Yeah. It'll never be. It'll be hundreds of years well, before it's all it's relative, right? Like space travel is as inexpensive as it's ever been. Yeah, and agreed. it's rapidly right. moving. It's so very expensive. But, yeah. <laughs> but relatively. But yes. But each of those steps is like an exponential cost, right? You get into space, and then you have to you know, figure out a way to bring but them. But the machines. hardest thing of getting into space is allowing Escaping. a human to exist in space. space yeah. And yeah, escape velocity. But once you're there, yeah. if you can do the collection and the manufacturing in space with robots, but that's just send that shit at back. At least hundreds of years to build out that infrastructure. At least hundreds of years. Yeah. Do you guys like, ever play Kerbal Space Program? It's hard. It's My hard to say that it's going to be hundreds of years. Yeah. But I also don't know. 
It's, it's, taken it's, them just, it's, it's a really hard thing to estimate. I don't, yeah, right? I don't think, I don't think we're going to come up with a valid estimation no. of how long certain things are going to take. I just don't, I don't think that, uh, that anybody has the. It's hard to forecast to that right now. It's, it's hard to forecast yeah. something out a year. It's, it's there, there's projections NP hard, you can find if you will. Oh, what's to, that? It's NP hard if you will. <laughs> to, uh, yeah. yeah. So with the car thing, my dick. Is I had a good hard. idea about this. Okay. Like once everyone has their own car. Yeah. Or once all cars are automated, right. you don't need your own car. Yeah. That's the think, whole thing, think right? Think of how is much waste just, there is in cars sitting in parking lots. Yeah. You use I'll them still have my own car, though. <laughs> That's the thing. People right. are still going to want their... Yeah, he, this guy's going to get in the way, too. Who, everyone's everyone's yeah. going to want their fucking muscle cars and yeah. their classic cars, which yeah. are just all pieces of shit. But what, what, and what happens when someone just damages a car? You know, what happens when there's yeah. stuff like that? There's, there's right. big issues there. Well, Killbot. Yeah. Auto insurance. <laughs> you have the, the kill van with all the mechanical <laughs> arms comes to your house. And it collects you <laughs> and puts you... It's like a garbage truck. <laughs> it throws you in the back. <laughs> and it takes you off to the... You get the, ground uh, up and then dumped on the, the landscape. That was, yeah. that was what happened in... Uh, what was it? iRobot? No. No, it, no, it, no it uh, would, we're going to be... It's all about recycling. And, and we're going to collect your organs for, for transplants. Yeah. We're going to collect your leather for mm-hmm. textiles. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't you remember that, an iRobot where they, uh, it wasn't meant to be murders, but someone was using it that way. It was like it was like a house demolition robot. The Will, the Will Smith movie? Yeah, the Will Smith oh. movie. He goes into this house and he's like supposed to go get something from it, but and, and it was like supposed to be demolished the next day and somebody like reprograms it and while he's ooh, in the house, it like starts going off. Nice. It literally did almost exactly what you were describing, Jeff. Yeah. It like <laughs> crushed up the house and then it was like just left it Come there. with me. <laughs> so if we don't each need our own car, yeah. like does New York's cars get cut in a hundredth no you know? probably not a yeah. hundredth i don't know i don't know so, i would say so at like best so we have all these material concerns and energy concerns but you have to also realize like i think a lot of those numbers are going to go way down in terms right. of what we actually need if if there's computers handling everything in the most efficient way possible right but, everything's gonna be yeah, really but quick you're and assuming good. that but humans aren't built around efficiency humans are built on no. extravagance and going well, above and beyond well not only that so. they're they're built on their own urgency People and so, want like things, if you want the, the car to show up at your doorstep and take you right there. You don't want the yeah. car to show up your doorstep and stop at four of the places, even no. if it was faster somehow. Yeah. Even if like you could convince everybody that this would be more efficient in the long term, it wouldn't be in the short term, and that's enough to put people back yeah. years. Yeah, and you're <laughs> you're assuming a perfect society where everyone's like just okay with this all of a sudden, but. Human right. yeah, nature. Yeah, it won't be an well, overnight thing. But I do think newer not, generations are more open to changes in technology and, it's, and the cultural yeah, if ripples. If you're born uh, with yeah. only 10% of people have cars, then only 5% of people have cars is not like a big step. Right. right. That's and what I'm saying. Like That's why I'm saying it's 100 yeah. years away. because It's yeah. at least hundreds of years away because there's generations you have to go through. Well, the, and it, the putting a number for on it For full adoption, maybe. Right. Yeah. But could you foresee uh, New York and San Francisco being fully automated in 20 years? No. 100% okay. no. 50? It, so, okay. I, I would bet you... Just within any amount of money that it will not happen in fifty years. Well, okay. no, no one will be fully automated. No, no. Even in, in a heavily urbanized area, like just yep. within the, the border of the city, yep. so, it will not be fully automated. So okay. I got a, I got a point here though. So I think the car automation thing is probably one of the things that we're closest to mm-hmm. the, the driving, just because we're actually seeing it in practice the, right now. The Tesla can already do it, and yes, I think the only way that we get there in twenty years is regulation. The government makes it happen. That would be the only way because yeah, it's so really expensive. And it's, that and it that might shared car happen. thing that I was talking about, yeah. that's the government making a huge yeah. like Eisenhower freeway capital yeah. investment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That would be the only way it would happen because right, otherwise right. it's just way but, too expensive. But I think, that is I think possible. That, that's stuff that everyone, like even the small government people, they can get behind My, infrastructure, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I don't think everybody's like, you're not going to get people in a rural area, but like at local government level, like if San Francisco as a city said, oh, yeah, they'd go for no it. more cars, no more self-driving cars, or sorry, rather, people driving cars. That's what I think is going to happen. What about, first, what about right? if someone wants to go to the, drive to the state, drive into, drive into the city? There's going to be like outer limits, right? So you have to the, park the, your car. No, the uh, kill van yeah, meets probably. them at the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> and it, and it, it's like, literally, <laughs> literally the, the, the amount of productivity that would be destroyed by that would be too astronomical from the sub. You couldn't or drive trucks be. into the city. You couldn't drive anything in the well, city. No, but you have no, like, yeah. you have trucks, the trucks that go to that spot. They probably have like a specific and they they unload they everything. outside the city. Yeah. It, well, if it's all automated, no. if no. it's all automated, yeah. I don't know. Maybe if the, if the computers well, are programmed to always yield to a person or something like that. Yeah. But then you have yeah. so many other questions. What happens when you get an accident? Who's responsible? Who's liable? The person is. If you're not driving, you're, you're responsible for your car crashing. Oh, no, they won't crash. I guarantee you they'll still be just like there will be like modern. Yeah, there will still be crashes. I don't think that has the, the Tesla been found at fault for any accidents yet. Well, I thought happened. there was that one where they it like heavily disputed. Read, oh, yeah, it went underneath a truck. truck. Yeah, yeah. And the guy got decapitated. Oh, 
But that's like one example. Yeah. Out of, out of there, thousands, there will be those. There will be edge cases. So ninety nine percent efficacy so far. But compare that to the driving. The driving conditions they're doing it in is usually very safe driving conditions like open roads stuff like that phase one was highway only turns yeah. off and rain now it, it now it can park and do city yeah. driving and then rain packets fucks. with lidar yeah and oh, does it doesn't compare so. it to they the have multiple redundant sen- they have the radar shit and they also have just optical stuff hmm. it's just cameras huh yeah so Neat. here's the thing i'm sounding like i'm not supporting of this i am supporting of it but sure, i'm sure. just trying to be no realistic. you're being a skeptic yeah. i like it well so okay this is something that i think that I've, um, I was reading about that's pretty interesting that I think could work in conjunction with like, say, say a, a, comp- or a, a city like San Francisco said, no more automated cars. There's this other concept that, um, of this company called The Boring Company. Have any of you guys heard about this? Yeah, that's, no, that's you drive boring. underneath. It's, it's Elon yeah, Musk it's the company. Sleds, right. It's an Elon Musk company. Of course it is. But mm-hmm. if you use that in conjunction, like you have, like, say you have those trucks that need to bring something in the city and you they put that, that in conjunction as a sled. Yeah, oh, yeah. so then it becomes... You drive up to the sled, and then everything inside of the city that isn't an automated car right. becomes automated by just driving onto a and platform. I, th- I think and that's it takes the most, it to where it needs to go. The most practical application of the Hyperloop too is freight at first. Yeah, I think that's actually what yeah. they're trying to use it as. Yeah, because yeah, nobody wants to fucking sit in a windowless tube underground. Yeah. Even if you're going 700 miles an hour, I think I think that's <laughs> I think that's where people are going to freak oh, out. Okay. A lot of it's not phobic. It's yeah. actually not underground. There's no out. The the Hyperloop is meant to be above. It's, oh, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah. it's meant to be like an above but, on but, like a. But you're in like a cement pressurized tube. I don't think it's time. supposed to be cement. It's a vacuum. Yeah. I thought that was no, part of pres- how it's so cost effective. Is they use like already prefab like sewage mm, tubes that just knock together is. and they have a liner. I was thinking it was like some form of glass, but it might be wrong. That sounds oh, really expensive. Glass. That sounds really impractical. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's just cement. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're probably right on that. It has but, to be a durable exterior because like if you have an air leak, the thing's fucked. Yeah. Well, no, it's you know well, it's, it's a partial vacuum. It's meant to be a partial vacuum. It's meant to have air leaks. No, partial vacuum uh, is because they're not depressurizing at 100%. Yeah, they're that lowering the pressure. To have no, I think air leaks. I'm, yeah, but I don't, I don't think that... But that probably means my, it could survive He's saying it wouldn't leak. be a catastrophic thing right, if my, there was right, an air leak. No, I, I agree with that. It would be a slower yeah. train. Right. Yeah. My understanding is that the, like, they could go way faster if they did an entire vacuum. Right. So that's what yeah. they, they were doing in a, as a so, way to, right, to, to offset that. resilient against your Right. We should describe these things. I think they were accounting for it. I think from what I read, it was meant to have not be entirely sealed. So that mm. if if it if just like as the base level they could go much faster it, because it was a partial vacuum. And it's just really impractical to, to create a vacuum on that side. Yeah, exactly. It's, really <laughs> it's also really yeah. dangerous. So what yeah. we're what we're talking about, if anyone doesn't know about this, is a train system that Elon Musk is proposing. It, imagine the bullet trains from Japan, where it's this needle looking train, a very sleek thing. That the reason they're so sleek is because the thing you run up into the most going three hundred miles an hour is the wind. If you ever stuck your hand out the window and the freeway going eighty miles an hour, it's a lot of resistance. Yep. So the way to take this to the next level is to have a tube that you travel through that is a lower air pressure, right. so you're meeting less resistance, and they can go like 700 miles an hour. Right, and it's like a pod that holds like 50 people or something, and they yeah. just launch them every 10 minutes. And it's it's the maglev stuff, which is uh, opposite polarity magnets. No, it's right. not. Uh, have you seen the sleds? None of them are maglev. I think that's the whole system for... I don't think so. Can you look that up? I was looking at the sleds, hyperloop. and I don't think... I think all bullet, bullet trains are maglev. Yeah, bullet trains are, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I've been and on... the hyperloop is not maglev? No, I think the hyperloop is more to be... It's air. I think it's, it's like an... It's because so like it's partial vacuum. Craft? I think it's... It's like an but it's supposed to be like you're on a pocket of air. Let's see. I might be wrong I on that. I thought it was maglev. Uh, it might be... Ma- I no, like you're right. I think, you're right. I think it was a combo of maglev and and air. Less air is... It's the cheapest propulsion, too, is maglev. Yeah. The ones I've seen have been... I don't know. Let's see. It's that lack of friction, man. Yeah, yeah. so nice. maglev, if you take two magnets that are stuck to each other, you flip the one around, and right. there's a resistance there. It creates a little pocket. Right. The whole train is on magnets. So there are very... electromagnets on the tracks, and they're turning yeah. on and off fast enough to drive it forward with right. no friction because it's right. not touching anything. So right. there's been a and bunch then you take of away that ones. air resistance, and it's really not touching much. Yeah. Yeah. So like you can uh, go like 700 like miles an hour. operating a train like a rail gun almost. That's exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. A, a rail gun is the same thing. You, you sequentially turn on magnets to magnetically drive the round forward. That's a lot of energy required, though. Well, yeah, but I don't minus. think maglev but, is. Um, not, but not for the train. Okay, anyways, either. essentially, there's a bunch of different alternatives. Yeah. Uh, the thing People is, are trying different all, things. Like right yeah, here, they're talking about... What is Hyperloop doing? Yes. Uh, well, People, within oh, Hyperloop, within Hyperloop, yeah. Hyperloop, oh, yeah, Hyperloop it's, still, it's all hypothetical. So, yeah, okay. so the, the background of Hyperloop was that Elon Musk came up with this idea. He, had, he wrote up like a big, long technical document of like what he thought it should look like. And then he released it out to... Um, at pretty much just the public, and then said... As it, Tesla does this, with everything. Right. right. And he said there's this contest, essentially, that people at MIT, Harvard, all 
started working on projects. And so whoever came up with the best thing, they were going to actually try to implement into, I think there was their test track in either Texas. They've already done it. I mean, you can already, they've already done it like, they've gone like 80 miles an hour or something. Sure, yeah. But I, I'm talking about like they were going to build like a full closed they did build actual... Uh, they have a test track. Oh, okay. You can watch Maybe a video of them, the sleds in the test track. But how fast? You're first, saying it's only 80 miles an hour. The first like, like full yeah. scale, full retard track, I think, is going yeah. up between Yemen and the UAE. There's like a strip of desert. Oh, that's They're right. They're doing yeah. like 100 miles of it or something. And then eventually, like the thought is that you can you can blast from like San Francisco to LA in 30 minutes. Right. That's, that's the idea. Yeah, which, so, is, so, which is not what the high speed rail that we're spending billions of dollars on. Right. And yeah, this so, is supposed to be a lot cheaper in theory. It says here like the original thing uh, proposed air ski bearings for levitation. Okay. And but then they said there might be insufficient airflow in a near vacuum. Uh, yeah. Oh, that makes so sense. So they're like trying a bunch of stuff, different yeah. things. Like there's these like um they're also talking about these other different kinds of wheels. They're saying like these type of wheels would be the best if they can get them, but there's like really? the theoretical What wheels threat. wouldn't catch fire at 700 miles an hour? Um good ones. <laughs> real, really real good fucking ones. good ones. Well, they're Some not hard they're not wheels shit. like you know. Yeah, they Or are they square? No, no. That sounds worse. It says we uh, they're triangles. <laughs> pneumatic, <laughs> pneumatic tires are the preferred option if achievable. What does that mean? Steel. That, that's all tires are pneumatic. Steel rim wheels. Oh, the, tires that are filled air with air. Yeah. Okay. Continuous traction is a great advantage. I shouldn't say all tires are pneumatic. <laughs> all, all, when not. you think of a tire, you but think it, of it. Yeah. Well, if you also if you think of like public transport, though, none of them use pneumatic tires. It's like a, a subway doesn't use a pneumatic right. tire. They're on a rail and they. Well, buses so, do. Sure. Oh, sorry. Uh, on on rails. I mean, like okay. like a, a very specific. So like that's interesting though. that they would they would say that, that would be the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I guess there's there's so many debate of yeah. Because rubber gets shitty. Anyway, yeah, weren't we say, talking about universal basic income? Sure. Well, but so this all comes to, down to automation. So well, this is, this is the only time I'm even considering universal universal basic income is is if all the jobs go away from automation. So yeah. that's, that's the only actually, reason it's on my radar. We have yeah. a, we have a disconnect there. I you know I think it can be implemented in. Stages. There could be a baseline of universal basic income as a form of, you know, a way of doing welfare that, yeah. you know, if you believe in the core concept of welfare. Well, look at Alaska, which, right? Alaska is kind of an example of well, that. Well, they get an yeah, oil subsidy. That. Not everyone has like, the rich resources and also a landscape shitty enough that no one wants to live there. So you get a big cut. No, you know, every, kind of everyone a, gets yes. paid to live there, though. But every person who lives there right, gets paid. Because it's full of oil and shitty to be in. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. isn't it? I thought Australia also had some form of this. I think if you're universal if you're, basic, I think so. I don't think so. Uh, not not in the sense for probably automation. a share in a resource. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. Somebody was telling. I worked with an Australian woman at, at when I was like in college, and she told me that as long as she like lived there for a certain amount of time, I don't know. I, I have no idea on this. She that she got some form of paycheck. I'll have to look into what. Yeah, she was I, talking about. I like the simplicity of it. Most of the legislation I, f I favor is always in. The direction of simplicity. Well, it's a relatively like, like the like fair, tax. fair way to do welfare, too. Because yeah, you've and got then we don't have to worry about fraud. It's just like, well, everyone gets this shit. Right, you exactly, know? exactly. You can't really game enough? it. The only way to game it people is who are to unemployed create fake people. More. Then they have to work for it. Yeah. No, we, that, we, that, 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 we can wash our hands and say, like, hey, you're getting the universal basic. Quit your bitching. No, that's not, that would never work. People, trust people. I mean, right now, you already have people who are on you know, welfare and taking advantage of that. Yeah. And people who like say that. minimum wage isn't a living wage. Right. Yeah. I'm, so I'm yeah. saying it's not, this it's is harder to take advantage of, though. Well, well right. Is Inherently. It? Because is there's, it? No, there's no dependency on, like, you need to prove that your income is below right. this level and you're still it's looking for jobs. Everybody right. gets it. But also, isn't it inefficient then? Isn't it inefficient because we're giving money to people who have billions of dollars and millions of dollars? Isn't that inefficient? No, you prorate it at a certain level. Well, it's they're, like if they're you make over this, too. you don't get it. Then yeah. it's not, that's not universal basic there's, income. There's inherently an <laughs> well, increased tax. It's a prorated version of universal basic income. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like the fair tax. Everyone gets taxed the same. That's prorated at the point. Well, no, no. If it's, if it's changed based on your income, that's a negative income tax. That's right. different. To be fair, right. like, it's, 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 a, it's still, a related concept. But still it, a universal thing. In the right. same way that Cole was saying, though. Prorate. If you had if you had a billionaire that was getting the basic income, they're probably paying way more into it, so it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, that's where it's all coming from. Yeah. Then what's yeah. the point of giving it to them? It's just because, because of that. Isn't, that, isn't that essentially again, what's easy? Isn't again, that essentially it's, what we're doing already? What? I mean, we already have like you know adjusted the tax well, yeah, rates. Yeah, so it, it is it is redistribution of wealth, but it's the added bureaucratic baggage of making it conditional, right? You right. have you have to qualify people, you have to pay people to qualify right. people, you have to pay people to check on those people. Yeah. If yeah. everyone just gets it. Then there's the yeah, you take away a lot of cost. You Actually, simplify might, it and you put a baseline. Is in. that yeah. cost higher? Than I don't know. The don't additional know. amount yeah. you have to give everybody. I think yeah, that's a great question. See, the, the problem is the way you I, you figure that out is by trying it, and yeah. it's it's never been like tried on a massive scale. There aren't countries that yeah. that like the U.S. has never had like an entire state be like, all right, we're implementing this. Yeah, yeah. Alaska's thing is like the 
That's I, a very special. I, well, it's a variable paycheck too. It's I, I don't think they know at the beginning of no, every it's year cut. what it's going to be. It's so a cut of yeah. what they sell in oil yeah. when, and whatever the market rate of oil is going to affect that and the consumption and all that. Right. When yeah. I think of like big problems in inside of states or any democracy or just general uh, the world we live in, it's there's a lot of inefficiency in the middleman, and so any time that that can be cut and just we can we can do it straight to yeah. like if you give money straight to the people that need it instead of having to like okay well this person needs to check on this thing and this person right. needs to check on this how thing how fucking awesome is the fair tax yeah I love the get idea rid of the, the fair IRS tax. is the fair tax is that just the, uh, the it's a flat it's, it's a flat sales tax, tax yeah. On, yeah it's a consumption okay. tax yeah. prorated at the poverty level right. so you you, and get, with, you get back you also have a, a certain so you get amount a prebate. Here. So yeah, you're yeah, given yeah. a certain. So you can't get rid of the IRS at that point, right? I mean, someone's supposed to figure all that out. How much you're yeah, but back. does Nobody that group of people? How large is that group of people versus the IRS? Yeah. There's literally like a, a tax accountants make a ton of money because they understand something that nobody else can. And the and is needlessly complex. Yes, it's is needlessly, well, needlessly complex. complex? Yep. Yes, I think it's generally it's, it's, it's deliberately it's complex. complex. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. right gives their kickbacks in the form of tax exemptions. Just like the left yeah. gives their kickbacks in the form of union uh, contracts. It's that That's just a mechanism of corruption that we have right now, and everyone is just okay with it for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I feel like tax is a very complicated thing, and that's why it's, I mean... But should it be? It doesn't... I don't, yeah, so the thing is... I think it, it should be to account for all the different variables and you into to have See, a yeah, working that's, democracy. That's where our disconnect is. Is it, it's, it's a republic. And it's not supposed to be a democracy. And there's supposed to be very basic outline things that the federal government is doing. And we're paying for all this other shit that they're not supposed to do. Right. It should be handled at the local level where you can track it because it's a manageable area. And, and it, it is addressing the UK. Right. But the federal needs of that area. Also don't like a social agenda being does. pushed by attack. It does for fucking highways and an army. And that's it. It also takes uh, a lot of complexity out of, of the issue of like people pay, putting money in an offshore account. Because if you're using the money, it's getting taxed. That's another thing. A sales tax is way harder to get around. Yes. So Not it, really, you just buy everything out of, out of the country. Sure. No, but that's, yeah. How do you get it here without yeah, us knowing? Then you, you still yeah, have you some have, form you, of import tax. It happens, all the, or whatever, it happens yeah. all the time. It's just as illegal sure. as getting but, something. But okay. that happens right it's now. It sounds way and harder. Then, yeah. That, that's just like one. There's... It's one layer versus like 50 layers. Okay, like right? you go there's no the, unique system, right? You go We're to the grocery store and buy your perishables, right? Yeah, like, yeah, but everyone do, everyone's doing that right now. No one's... Yeah, Yeah, but he's saying yeah. if you pay the tax there... Yeah, yeah right. that's not something you're getting around it by importing We're, it from out of the country. But that's not where that's not where the bulk of someone's... If someone's a millionaire, that's where the bulk of their tax obligations... But, but that's absolutely where the bulk of the country's tax is going to come from is the basic everyday things. There, right? already, is, there already is sales tax on it. Yeah, but it's not... I know, but, but this, it's, this it's is like a 24% yeah. tax instead of a 8. Massive yeah, increase it's, on it. It's a lot more. Yeah, but that, it, that you don't want to tax someone 24% on food. Yes, I do. Well, if, if Don't tell me what I want to do. You are. You are either way, right? This just, no, not necessarily. Well, I, sure you are. Part of the argument here is that you're already paying that with the income tax as you go down the right. manufacturing chain. To buy a house, you're, you're paying the architect, the engineer, yeah. all, the, all the income tax that goes to the construction, the manufacturing of the pieces that go into making that house. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be revenue neutral. You're paying the same amount every right. year. It's just easier to track and simple for everyone, and you don't have to pay the overhead of the IRS. Except that you will be taxed more if you buy things. But you, yes, that's you, a you bias within itself. No, it, you understand. You could go a whole so year. So actually, revenue neutral, right? Like, so you're, I think, you're I think, already paying that money. You just don't see it yet, right? I think when you, when you buy those groceries, you're paying for the maker of the tractor, the guy who supplied parts yeah, for yeah. the tractor, the, the guy who harvests everything. There's right. an income tax and all, the are, yeah, all the way along the way along the track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you don't buy anything in a year, then you will not be paying. Yes, as but then the next year you have yeah. to buy all your shit. But that's fine. Yeah, that, it's a consumption tax. Yeah, but which is the reason that we have it now is it's more it's more predictable for budgets, right? It's more like. It does, it does. If we hit another recession and no one's That's buying it. anything, that is going to affect the tax income a lot. That's the same thing yeah, as if people, we hit a recession and it, nobody's making. Is there any a money. difference between yeah. income and consumption? You get income when people consume things. They I, should be linked at some level, right? Yeah, I think it's just easier to track. I think it's easier yeah. to track when it's a consumption, and well, it's also yeah. easier to. Uh, it's harder to skirt. You're now well, auditing. Not, no. You're now auditing every business rather than auditing every person. person. There are a lot more yes, people than exactly. businesses. Exactly. That's, that's a great so, point. You know. But uh, what about what about like black market will be sure, a huge thing. There's, there's always going there's to be a black market. Always black market. Is, this will there's already that for income. There are people that don't pay their taxes. So instead of that, you instead know? of all the effort that they have cracking down on taxes, they put that effort on cracking down on the black market. Right. They have it on, instead of like dealing with people that didn't pay like ten thousand dollars in taxes. They go, okay, there's these people that are. Bringing no. in millions yeah, of dollars. Look, of look at what's coming into this fucking dog. Right? So it'll be a fewer amount that you need to invest. Or people. Well, well, no, you order people, an individual product from overseas. Yeah, you know, that type of thing. You're not thing. paying your, yeah. your import taxes. Small fish, that. though. 
Well, it can well, be. Huge it is. It is now. But if you implement a this system, a business? if you're if you're able to save twenty five percent on something by buying it overseas, if you don't pay the the tax, yeah. and yeah. it's going to become a bigger fish. More people but, are going to try the, to get away the, with it. The inconvenience of that, like, oh very, no, I, very, I agree. Very I agree that it's more that. efficient. Yeah. The one the one thing that the one concern. Well, not I about have, efficiency. It's a, it's about who's actually going to opt into this system, and if it's a very. Uh, ineffective or inconvenient thing to go overseas and buy your shit right. versus skirting some taxes at the corporate level, right. which isn't that hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about all the money that was like uh, uncovered in like the Panama Papers, all the shit that was like stored elsewhere. Yeah. It's like this billions and billions, probably trillions of dollars. Right. And right now businesses can afford a professional to do that. People can't. Right. Right. So if you make it at the person level, right, it's going to be a lot harder to get around. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a very good idea, but it is sort of getting away from. I think. What's I think the one about. the one problem I have with like flat taxes, you know, no, sales tax is, on uh, everything. Fair tax is different than the the flat tax. It's but similar. The, but the sales tax oriented strategy. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, is I think there's there's a general like conservatism about spending money, and the way the economy grows is by encouraging people to spend even frivolously, get them to spend constantly, so the money's mm-hmm. changing yeah. hands, everyone's working, totally. everyone's doing things and getting money. And I think anything that increases the cost on the per purchase level is going to put pressure on that. I think it's going to cause people to be more conservative about their spending. It's the one thing I worry about with Which that. Which might not be a terrible thing. Like it's a it's a chain, right? It's <laughs> well, a chain it's, of events. It's that bad for the thing. economy, yeah, is the point that I'm making. You want people to spend money. They need to spend money. That's why it's why our economy it's exists. Why, yeah, you know? it's why we always incentivize spending. I mean, if, yeah, if you're going to like go back tax. to agrarian society, yeah, I don't know how I feel a thing. about. That. I think I it's know. a good concern. I just don't think people would change their habits. I think people absolutely would. If everything was 25 percent more expensive, they're just not going to buy anything anymore. No, I'm not well, saying they're not going to buy shit they're not, they don't need. Yeah, you think they're doing that now because everything's yes. so cheap and awesome? I think I think yeah. it's easier to do now to some extent. Yes, because things are cheaper than they would be yeah. under the scenario. Can can you? Give a guess at quantifying that. Uh, well, I can give like a personal example. Yeah. Like I'm somewhat frugal about things. I have this very defined like price point where I'm willing to to pay for certain things, right? Like I, I figured out that I shop differently from other yeah. people. I well, figure out the thing that I want. Conceptually, remember it's it's the same. Your your price went down ten percent and the sales tax increased ten percent. Right. Right. The idea. Right. My it income is ten percent higher. But but now I've got this kind of drive. Like oh, I get to see my bank account go up by this amount. <laughs> but if I buy this fucking like watch that I don't need, yeah. right? It's now going to go down by an equivalent amount. And like I'm yeah. a hoarder, right? So I'm like kinda, <laughs> I'm loss averse. I don't want to. I don't want that to see that number. Go. Yeah. I hate watching that sure, number go yeah. down. I, That's the worst thing. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. But it it seems like it would be a chain, right? So it's the same thing where. If a person stops spending as much money because they don't need to spend as much money, a business would do the same. And, it would and, just, and then you lose jobs. But you wouldn't need as much. No, you wouldn't lose jobs. Do we you think the system would. is good and worth holding on to what we have right well, now? Our unemployment rate's at 4.3%, which I think is pretty much as good as you can get. It's not, I think there it's are, not what it's at. I think there it, are middle, I, middle it's, grounds. It's up on the screen right now. 4.3%. Yeah, but it's no, also they, like how they skew they've it. They've stopped counting people who are no longer looking for work. Which is the, how the, the cutoff unem- shrank. It's, it's like only both, a couple months You're now. both right, because the unemployment yeah, rate is what it says it is. Well, you can define it as whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Well, but it has a definition. There's a lot of people without jobs now. Yes. Are there a lot of people without jobs who are without jobs because have they, they choose to be without a job they've or because they literally can't find a job? They've like stopped looking. Any job. Yeah, yeah there's a lot they've of people given up, stopped looking. Yeah. Which is... Because... I don't know enough to say which that is. Yeah. That's, that's the issue with the unemployment. I just know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of controversy with that stat. I don't know enough to... But that's know. also what would happen if we implemented basic income is there would be people who would stop looking for jobs. And that's fine. But increase. that's supposed to be okay. So why is it not system. okay in this current system? It's as, it's as scarcity is reduced. I'm not saying it's not okay in this current system. I'm not arguing yeah. against basic yeah. income. I was, I was raising a concern with... Uh, no, I agree. I agree. And I agree that's a huge... Uh, taxes. Like, I know. And to that's me, that's an, a, a less fulfilled life, right? So I, if so, yeah, they I mean, want to do that, that's I th- fine. I think the, I the connotation in the future... That's what, it, it always comes back to the automation thing for me, for this to work. Yeah. Because the connotation on being an unemployed like leech on the system yeah. is right. different. If, but have you right, seen, if you're not taxing other people, you're taxing robots. Yeah, we're benefiting Sorry, from their labor. Literally. Who are owned yeah. by people. I don't, right. mean, I don't mean literal right, tax. Right I mean. now, those people on welfare who have given up are benefiting from the labor of actual people. Right. And they would be if you had basic income as well. Less, though. Again, this is always conditional on well, automation for me. So once we get enough automation that... People have no jobs. Right. All the people who 
drive for a living, who deliver shit for a living, who do construction, manufacturing. Right. The so entire manufacturing industry goes uh, away. Let's talk about like the, a degree of universal income now. Like you're completely I'm against, unequivocal. I'm against, against it right that. now. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's enough automation to warrant yeah. it. I think but I you, think it's on the horizon, so it's good to start talking about it. Right. I think if you see like, so you have some automation that comes in, you can actually quantify how much money that is. And you yeah. see where it came if from. If we get a robot who can analyze something and move something, manufacturing goes away, right? So if we know a sector is going to get eaten up, sure. But I'm saying you can I'm, maybe start to quantify it. But I'm literally yeah. saying like, if you quantified like, okay, these robots exist and they make they bring in this much money, mm -hmm. that can then be the basic income level. How, but and robots that's spread evenly. Oh, I see. We we benefit from what got gobbled up at the bottom. Make it right. literally, literally, what is yeah. Okay, like la last year, we were going to spend this much on income for uh, manufacturing and driving. Sure. Now, this year, those jobs have gone away. Yeah. So everyone gets a cut of that? But yeah. that, that would be unevenly distributed, though, because everyone well, would... some people got hit 100%, some people got hit 0%, right. but everyone's getting a, a yeah. portion. And that's an, right. It's definitely an issue like you'd have to think about. Like, Do you give it 100% to the people that lost their jobs? Do you give it evenly? And then those people can right. go find jobs the that guy who was maybe pay less. 100% of his different. income was coming from that is right. now... Is now 10% of right. the population who's sharing that. Right. So it's but it also might a, drive up opportunities in other places try, for them I to learn to and do something else. So. worry about fairness on this thing, actually. Yeah, it, I don't think... Little, it, it drives you insane. It's the whole yeah, foundation I think, of this. Is, I, don't, I don't agree. I think the foundation of it is what's the most practical for society. Right. What makes society as a whole better. Right. That's, yeah, you're right. And I think and, that's what the universal part of it is, is that it being fair it does not necessarily specific. make society better. I don't right? think yeah. you should... Um, if someone loses their job... This might sound very harsh of me, but no, then it's the responsibility to find a new job. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not society's responsibility to say, let's protect these jobs that are going yeah. away. I just think yeah, we're, we're, we're going to get to a but point we, we where... we half-ass it now, though. To, to, like, to function optimally, we, we might need a million people working instead of 350 million people working. Yeah. So there is no go find another job because there aren't any. This... This and, comes, unless there's just new jobs, I just I mean there's new things that we want, and there's yeah. new desires that we want, and there's well, new things that people pay for. That's what's happened every time for. in the past. Is every time a new technology yeah. has come up, people yeah. are like, "This is going to cause mass unemployment," right. and then they're yeah. like, "Oh, they need people to fix I'm these not, machines." I don't, yeah, but, I don't want to be a luddite. Is, yeah. There is a theoretical future where you know, right? And less like, AI and less like all human. That's why I keep coming back to the the post scarcity, fully automated NP problems are done thing because that's the only way that this really works for me. Yeah, but even if essential, even even if post scarcity, all the essentials are taken care of mm -hmm. by automation, there might be everyone might be really into like the arts and that kind of stuff. Like there yeah. might be a whole another right. There might be a whole yeah. other sector of stuff that everyone values as a society. I hope so. And so your unemployment might, I mean, it might not even change. Wait, why does it yeah. have to be like a job though? Why can't it just be what you do? Yeah. Like if you, well, if you think well, that's ideally what you it just is like now, in, isn't like it? Star yeah. Trek. Like you, you, your goals are are different, right? Like <laughs> I'm gonna bring back to Independence Day. <laughs> Everything comes back to the best day with you. You said you said we need to unite behind a common enemy to yeah. work together. Yeah. Well, well, that that enemy just represents like a motivation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like it, it's really a common goal the, is what we need. It was survival in that instance. Yeah. And I think, but it could be like if you right. think about the Star Trek ideal, it's, it's exploration, knowledge, betterment, fulfillment. I think more that like is too lofty for humans. I think for for, for most for people, all humans, yes. But for I think a majority of people aren't motivated by self actualization. I think they are. I, th uh, I don't think, I think they, they are. are. But this oh, is just an are. opinion thing. We have no way to quantify this. I think, I think everybody's version of self-actualization is very different. Some of that just might be smoking weed and sitting on a couch eating chips, where some people is might want to go Is that actual self-actualization, though? Is that not what it's supposed to be? I, I don't know. But, uh, to but that there's person, so many factors. You've got to decide your own, right? So if that's all you care about and universal basic income is enough for you, then cool. Sit on your couch, smoke weed. Eat chips. But I'm that, gonna go that could be, travel that could be the world. Disillusion with the system. You exactly. Know? Yeah. There's a lot of things. That, so many things. I know. Right. So I we, don't, we don't know how humans will. I think if you take children as an example, we start as motivated, curious creatures, yeah. right? And I'm hoping that continues if it's not impeded by like our shitty commercial culture. So uh, here's an idea, just a quick one. Uh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I think most people are unmotivated turds. I agree. And I think I, agree. I think that most people yeah. I just I don't think given the option to not work are a lot of not most but a lot of them are not going to work. But all the people on Now we have to ask ourselves do we really want these people in the workforce? <laughs> exactly. Do you want do you want <laughs> right. that shitty coworker that doesn't do their job or would you rather yeah. Do we give them the 20 grand a year to go away? Yeah, to just <laughs> yeah. Sit, it's either in we, their, sit in their room and send them to a farm. I'd Xbox. rather give them 20 grand a year to serve me a burger. Do we at least they're serving a function? Not if they're bad at it. But not what if, if they're that? What if a robot could do that for thousand dollars? 
Or I'm, I'm going to turn into Ryan here. We just kill them. <laughs> we just don't have them anymore. I'm okay no. with that. We don't need more of those shitty people. Not an option. Of course it's not. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> just want to make it's sure. It's a slippery yeah, slope, but aware. if we could do it correctly, no. it would be... And I think that's the idea of Universal Wake Him. We're going we're gonna to have that, much, that many people doing that anyway. We don't know that. That's, well, that's my main maybe. argument, is that right. people have thought that for hundreds of years. People thought that when the aqueduct were built, that yeah. they would, you know, all the people who were carrying buckets yeah. weren't going to find new well, Eventually, okay. they but won't be I, right. I think, I think we've addressed how this is different. But all, I think, this I think people is have different. been making that same argument that their generation and their but, automation is but different. But they were smart enough Again, to say they were wrong. And th- eventually, like, it's going to be correct. Yeah, exactly. It might not be we're this one. We're moving towards something. It might be the next one, or it might be the one after that, but yeah. eventually, it's probably going to be correct. Just because it's never been correct before doesn't mean it's not going to. Right. I'm, I'm, I know, I know. And but I think also just because uh, the world has an end before doesn't mean it's not going to right, right. now. But right. the probability of our generation being the one where we reach a self-actualization when it's such a lofty distance from where we are now. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't the, think any the, of us are The cultural it's be chains us. of like having a job yeah. is going to take a yes. while to shed, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think you're, you're, the timeline you're talking about is correct factoring all that. Yeah. The the cultural mental shift that has to take place to not feel weird yeah. about like, oh, I don't have a job now. I better figure out what the fuck I want to do. Right. right. Like no no one left to their own devices. And this is what you guys are seeing about people being lazy and stuff, is because they're used to having they're being led around. Like you go to you, Right. We have this prescribed pattern of behavior yeah. in our culture where you get a job, that's what you do. Then you get married, you take care of your kids, and right. you're just busy with bills and people who depend on you. People have a really hard time figuring out their own thing. And some and people just, just do what they Some people are just not intelligent. Time. Some people just don't want... Some people just, no matter how much they apply themselves, will not be able to apply themselves in yeah, a higher that's degree. that's very true. Yeah. They shouldn't go to college. <laughs> we already talked about this. <laughs> All right. <Pull> back. Yeah. <laughs> but um, also, we haven't even considered other countries with billions of people. <laughs> Such a big deal. All right. You're well, right. I think, <laughs> well, before we get into that, we're going to wrap this one up. Okay. Can I make one tiny little? All right. One closing comment. <laughs> closing comments. Everyone, has, everyone gets a closing comment. <sighs> if you it's want. Not, it's, not, it's a question that has a long explanation. So no, never mind. This can be another episode. Pose the I was, com- Okay. I was going to ask, like, what do you guys think of leapfrogging technologies? Like giving people in Africa laptops when they don't have like working power. Water. We're just setting them up like solar and the internet. Yeah, they're doing We're, that already. Not necessarily right? bad. Like that's, that's the prime directive kind of kick in here. I think a lot of them, I've, I've heard stories where they, they get that technology and then they do their best because they find out that living in the United States is great, so they move here. Okay. And they start trying to move their families here. I, I was actually reading a story about a guy that, or no, uh, I think Blake was telling me gotta, a story. I was about, just thinking about Blake. We got to uh, get him on. He, yeah. he told me a story about a friend, just to close this out. To, he told me a story about a friend when he went over there. That, to uh, Namibia? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what Namibia, what, what Namibia, 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 Namibia. Namibia? Namibia? Namibia. Anyways, same. so um, where uh, they got it, he got enough money to go to the states, go to college, and then well, the the his, mining company that owned the town or whatever had scholarships to send you to this mining engineering school, yeah, which okay. is where Blake yeah, went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his he became friends with the lucky kid from that village right. who got sent to America right. to be educated. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and basic, then the mine went under, for, and he had he got this free education and was not obligated to work there anymore. Right. So he stayed. Right. And so he yeah. stayed. And then his entire goal was to move his family to America. Yeah. That was, that was, the, he was like, I'm, I can get everybody here and get them enough money to move like that. Or I can like at least send it back and they can live very, very happily. And then the mother was, I'm Me just going to stay here and I'm going to adopt all these kids. So the mother just kept working and adopting more children Yeah, because that's what she felt so her responsibility was like good people. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think most people are good people. I think so. I, I, I do right. agree most Whoa. people are good people. Yeah. I, I think most people are good people, but... All right, all right. There's so many all right, people. All right. <laughs> it's a, it's an evolutionary imperative that we have to work together because the Boom. people who didn't get Boom. fucking cast out. Okay, no more cancer worms. We're wrapping it up. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. Check us out on the social media. Or don't. I don't ever post anything. Yeah. yeah but, there's not much to see there. What we'd love, is not, we'd love to see is like if you have any oh, comments yeah. on this. Oh, yeah. Can someone please, please interact with us? Is anyone out there? Just, t- just yeah, tell me to fuck to myself. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> there's at least 50 people who listen to this. Yeah, we, yeah, we not 50 people, but 50 yeah, listens. Do we know? Have you checked the hate mail? Address? Do we check the Jake at Battle? I haven't checked it. I guess I should check it. (laughs) All right. I hope it's constructive criticism. (laughs) Bye. This is the Babylon Bargain. This is the Babylon Bargain.